All right, I'm gonna show you how and why you should be using the developer folder within Unreal Engine. So to start out, uh, if you don't know what the developer folder is, uh, it's a folder that comes with Unreal by default. And the whole purpose of this folder is to be kind of your experimental folder. It's where you uh, build new stuff, or if you have to do a big refactor that might break a lot of things, you can do that in your dev folder. So it's kind of your place uh, to experiment with personal work, be your little playground, etc. Now, in order to show the dev folder, because by default it's hidden, uh, you go over to settings within your content browser and underneath content, you have show developers content. So now that we've clicked to that, you can see that it's populated a new folder here called developers and it's got a special icon. So if we dive in, you can see that it's gone ahead and created a folder with my name. And by default, whenever a user opens up the dev folder, if they don't have a folder that matches their PC name already, it's gonna go ahead and uh, make a folder for them. So if you had this project versioned and another developer opened up the dev folder for the first time, it's gonna go ahead and make a folder for them. Now, important note, if you change the name of your dev folder and then you reopen the project, it's gonna remake you a new dev folder based on your PC name. So it'll actually duplicate your folder essentially, or make you a new one rather. So that is one important thing to note. The one thing that you wanna make sure with dev folders is that you're using it for experimental work and not actual work for your project or like final work or something that's gonna be referenced. So just to give you an example of how this would work, let's say we have this M Atlas master material, right? And by default, this is for uh, decals, but we want it for something else. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this into my dev folder. And we now have a new one. And let's say we wanna go in here and we don't wanna use this for decals because we need a different one just for surfaces because we wanna use some Atlas materials for surfaces. So I can switch this to surface and you can see that it's broken quite a bit of stuff. We have to go in and redo a few things. This is why you would use the dev folder, right? Because if you tried to do this in the normal folders, uh, depending on what you're working on, you can actually break quite a bit of stuff. So that's a good example of kind of why you would use this. Uh, other examples are big refactors, experimenting with some complex mechanics, basically anything that has a chance to break your project, corrupt things, so on and so forth. Also just messing around with personal work if you're trying to build something on your own. One thing to note, is that when it comes to the developer folder, it's within the content folder. And typically the content folder, including the developer folder, is submitted to version control and versioned. Now it's up to you on whether you wanna put in an ignore for the dev folder so it doesn't get pushed. Generally, I push the dev folder for my team just because uh, lots of times people build an initial prototype of something in their dev folder. And then once it's pretty stable and working, then they'll move it out but oftentimes that can take more than a day or two and they want to version that content just to make sure that they don't lose it. So we typically do version the dev folder. Now the problem with versioning the dev folder is that the dev folder often contains a lot of errors, a lot of broken stuff, things that can uh, break your build and so on. So one thing I recommend is actually blocking the dev folder from your packaged builds. So in order to do that, you just come up to platforms and if you scroll down, you can go to your packaging settings. And now that we're in our packaging settings, underneath packaging, we wanna to go to the last option, which is advanced. It's this little drop down. So if you click on that and then scroll down, there's actually an option to uh, block certain directories. So directories never uh, to never cook, right? So what we can do is we can add a new item here. And then we're just gonna point this to our dev folder. So now whenever we package up our game, which you should be doing early and often if you're building a game, is we're going to ignore the dev folder. So the dev folder is not gonna get cooked. And the reason we do this is because the dev folder shouldn't contain anything that should actually go into your packaged build. The dev folder is more experimental. It shouldn't actually be making content into there. This is an important step because if you don't do this and the dev folder is versioned, oftentimes it's going to break your packaged build. Even though stuff in there might not be referenced, it's just gonna break it because Unreal is gonna go through and try and cook that dev folder. So even if it's not touching anything outside of it, it's gonna throw a bunch of errors because, hey, this material's got an error in it. This animation is referencing a blend space that doesn't exist. Uh, this blueprint doesn't compile, et cetera. You get errors like that all the time in the dev folder and it can always break your build. So I highly recommend to never cook this directory. It's gonna save you a lot of headaches. If you do this and you make a build, things in your dev folder can reference stuff outside of it. So for instance, if uh, I go back into my dev folder, instead of doing this, if I had created a 
uh, material instance from this uh, to put in my dev folder to mess with instead of actually duplicating it, it would be referencing something outside of the dev folder. That's totally fine. Your dev folder can reference things from outside of it. That's not gonna cause any problems. It's not gonna break anything. However, if you do the reverse, if, you're, if you are referencing things from your dev folder in the main project, the dev folder is not getting cooked. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna throw a bunch of unknown errors that you're gonna have to track down whenever you try and package the project. So for instance, if I had this material in my dev folder and then I had, let's say a mesh in my uh, level prototyping folder that was referencing that material, it's not gonna find that material when it goes to package the project and it's gonna throw a bunch of errors. So in short, if you do end up blocking the dev folder on your cooks, make sure that you reference things from the main project in the dev folder, but not vice versa. That's gonna save you a lot of headaches. So hopefully this was helpful. Let me know if you wanna see more content like this. If you did enjoy it, give me a like, give me a comment. Uh, feel free to subscribe if you want. And with that, I'm out.